Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee, getting ready to get my day started. Uh, get my breakfast going, get some squats going. Uh, a topic I thought about today, because I had someone link me, someone, and I don't really know who this guy is, I've seen the name somewhere, Sean something, is a coach who is starting his own supplement company, and he's kind of making a pre-announcement of several products and saying it's all research-based, and it's going to be evidence-based products, and all these people hyped up, I guess, followers of his, and it kind of reminded me of something when someone asked me a while back, uh, it's a Jason, you uh, say there are a tiny handful of supplements that work, why don't you start your own ethical supplement company? <laughs> And there's some problems with that from a logistics perspective, and that's what people need to realize is that even if someone starts an honest supplement company that uses the four products that actually work, and there's only like four supplements that are of value to any significant number of people, meaning most supplements that uh, work outside of that or because there's something really wrong with your diet or your body and you can probably get those covered by your medical insurance anyways like they're, those are usually prescription that your doctor can test for and your it'll be covered by your doctor your insurance all that you won't need to buy supplements uh, again you know your b12 deficient it's not hard to get a b12 deficiency uh, vitamin you know you can go get a prescription for this stuff this is again medicine at that point uh, or, you know, people have an iron deficiency, but the problem is that a lot of times those are created by your lifestyle. Like, let's say you choose to be vegan, you're probably going to need B12, and if you argue against that, you're prob you're, you're stupid. You're stupid, you're going to hurt your health. Uh, you're, you're, again, being delusional with your diet at that point. So, we come over to the point of there's a problem with economies of scale and I want to explain why. Because ultimately, you're either going to have to mark a product up uh, more than it should cost if you're a smaller company like let's say you're a youtuber with 300,000 followers you have a really really small customer base and you're gonna have to get production going somewhere and ultimately you're either gonna have to go talk to a bigger company that already does unethical business to make your products and sell them or you're gonna have to start a company to do it yourself but you're gonna end up having to charge more than what the products are actually worth on the open market and then you're going to have to rely upon your name to get people to pay more for the product all right and that's the problem we run into now we're no longer in good ethics because you're overcharging for something and using purely your name to do it because you're a coach you're a youtuber you're someone people uh, like and they follow and so therefore they're going to buy your products just because they like you but they are going to overpay for those products. They're going to be paying a lot more than they would from a larger manufacturer due to economies of scale. Well, what do I mean by that? Let's look at the four supplements that actually work. The protein powders, right? Creatine monohydrate, vitamin D3, fish oil, right? That's, that's basically or similar things, you know, there are other omega-3s you can get. Those are your four products that work. Everything else is a ripoff. And it doesn't matter how much research people think they have. When you start digging into the research, it's actually oftentimes really inconclusive. Like, you'll see a lot of these people out there say, well, I've got all this research-based product. We see YouTubers doing it right now. I mean, Mike Rasheed pulling that stuff. Then you go look at his ingredients. All four of his ingredients, the research isn't good supporting them, and there's no research showing his proprietary blend. So he's throwing together four items of extremely questionable value the research isn't particularly good showing any of it works, and there might not even be a human trial having been done even on people ever. Uh, throw the four together and call it a research-based product and then slap a $50 price tag on it. Well, now we're jumping over into bad ethics again. That's just being a con artist. But let's say you take any of those four things that work. And again, go back to look at what certain people who are knowledgeable are doing. You guys remember Eric Helms used to endorse more products? You guys notice he started pulling his things. There's a bunch of stuff he used to recommend. It. He's not on his recommended list anymore. The, the list starts going down among people who really know what they're doing. And in fact, you're only finding a handful of knowledgeable people still pushing BCAAs, and that's only because they're financially invested in it. Right, we the, the meta analysis multiple of them now are showing BCAAs aren't really useful towards your goals. They're not a good product. They're not helpful outside of what's in your food already or in your protein powder. So you've got those four products that work. Well, why is there an economy of scale issue? Okay, we'll take protein powder and creatine monohydrate. The problem you have is that most protein powder companies out there, when they start digging into it, like if you look at Consumer Reports. You don't even know what you're getting a lot of times. The protein powders tend to be underdosed. 
you will find oftentimes excessive levels of contaminants. And when people go through and measure it, like Consumer Reports has done, these, these aren't even safe half the time, meaning your, your amount of lead or arsenic or something like that will sometimes be three, four, or five times higher than it really should be ideally in those products. Uh, then you find a small handful of really, really big companies because they've got economies of scale, they're well established, you make basic products. Like a perfect example, Optimal Nutrition is a perfect example. Uh, they make protein powders in blends that are proven to work pretty well as far as a wide range of people willing to enjoy the flavor and actually drink it because if you do a protein powder, you actually got to make it taste somewhat decent and protein powders, even the best tasting ones, wear on you real fast. Uh, they consistently score low when they're tested on all the contaminants, the heavy metals, lead, arsenic, uh, again, things like that. I forget another one that's oftentimes found, and there's a third toxic metal in there, and I don't remember which one it is right now. But lead and arsenic are near the top of the list, and those are usually sometimes excessive and even name brand proteins. So you're going to run a smaller company that you can't always control the filtering process because of the source you're getting it from. You're, you're going to end up having a lower quality product than a company like that. Uh, and then they sell them bulk sometimes. So they'll even sell the big, big bags of their stuff. You can get it on Amazon sometimes really cheap. Well, you've got to compete with companies like that for your protein. You know they've got a better tasting blend. You know they're producing a pure product that always scores well in consumer reports. You've got to compete with that. And then because of their economies of scale, they can make it cheaper and sell it cheaper than you can. So basically, if you're going to do protein, you're probably going to end up producing an inferior product to them and have to charge more for it. All right, that's, we're now getting into you're, you're simply selling your name and your reputation as a coach, a YouTuber, whatever at that point. You're competing with a better company that makes a better product at a lower price because of their experience in the game, their economies of scale, the amount of volumes they produce. They do it cheaper. Same thing with creatine. Everyone wants to do these proprietary blends. you got companies like them. And Optimal Nutrition does make some garbage products. They make products that don't work, but they only have a handful of products outside of protein. And they tend to be very basic stuff. Oh, creatine monohydrate. That's what's in it. BCAAs. That's what's in it. All right. That's kind of what you want because blends don't actually work. When you start doing the research, a lot of these blends don't have any benefits over that one ingredient that's thrown in. People make proprietary blends so they can mark the price up and have an excuse to sell it because you got to compete with companies like that. Now, you can beat their price on creatine when you go buy just bulk creatine at a generic label, right? You can do it that way, but if you want something with a, a pretty label from a name brand, you go with someone like Optimal Nutrition but you're not going to be able to sell creatine cheaper than they are and make a profit. Because you as a smaller company, you're going to be forced to just buy bulk powder, mix it, put your, you know, put your own label on it. Uh, they do all that cheaper. You're probably going to have to charge a dollar or two more than they do for the same amount of creatine, maybe even three or four dollars more for container, in order to make a profit off of it because you're going to be at a different economies of scale than they are. It's the same product, and all creatine products are the same. Anything in that creatine product besides the creatine monohydrate, which is dirt cheap, it's dirt cheap. Uh, I mean, I buy it for, I think, $17 a kilo is what I buy it at bulk just for my use. You buy a kilo at a time, and you're done. But if you want a name brand instead of just a generic powder, you go with someone like them. Well, other people can't make that same product for less if you're a smaller company that you're only going to produce, uh, you know, a thousand units a month to sell, you can't compete with them. Uh, again, just in terms of production. So you've got to compete with that. Well, how are you going to do that and make a profit? You have to mark the price up. You're going to have to charge more for the same product and you know your product's not better. And in some cases, again, due to your cost and everything else, it might be a slightly inferior product. You have to compete with them. The same thing when we come to the D3 and fish oil. There's already reputable vitamin companies, as there is such a thing, that mass produce these that you can buy them. Again, just a big thing of fish oil that's been properly filtered that you can throw in your freezer. You can buy them at any grocery store, buy them off Amazon. Vitamin D3, same thing. You just mail order it from all these companies that have tons of years making this stuff. They produce large economies of scale. You can get vitamin D3. Uh, and I mean cheap. It, so it's like you have these companies who will sell you these products for like a five dollar a month for your one month supplies like five dollars you making your own company you've got to compete with that 
Well, you can't compete with that. All you can do is sell your name on it so that people are willing to pay more for your exact same identical product but with your name on it. So what people end up doing to justify that, and we're seeing YouTubers do the whole time, they'll throw two or three or four other ingredients in to make a proprietary blend so that they can charge $20 or $30 for a $5 product that you could go buy that for $5 from an already larger manufacturer with better quality controls and a larger production in place. You guys see the problem here? So when we start talking about doing an ethical supplement company, making one yourself, a smaller one, and actually doing it in a way that produces a product of value to your consumers, you can't do it. You can't compete what's already there because all the products that work are very generic and they're already mass produced and people can sell single ingredient products already who are big manufacturers. So your only way to compete with that is either make some garbage proprietary blend and now you're, you're being a, a con artist or you're selling your name because people like you and it's basically the same as just starting a donation page but you're just giving them a product and charging double or triple what it's worth uh, but it's a form of donation where people will feel like they're getting something back. But it's no different than having a Patreon or a uh, PayPal donation site ultimately. Because these people could, if they really wanted, could just go buy that generic product online and give you the other $10 as a donation every month if they really like you. So, I mean, you're, you're running a business, but you're really not. You're, you're basically running a donation page for your fans so that they can get a fish oil or a D3 or a creatine with your name on the tub, like an autograph signature. So therein lies the problem with this, and, and that's ultimately what it comes down to, is that there aren't enough products that work <clears throat> to really start a line, and because we know what works is already mass produced, there are already companies with better quality controls and economy of scale in place that can probably kick out a better product than smaller companies can for less money. And the industry is already oversaturated because every single person out there is pushing their own line, their own brand. And half the time, if not more, it's already made by a larger company that sells snake oil and they just slap your label on it for you and sell it. But the consumer isn't getting anything special. They're overpaying for your signature line so that they can have your name or picture or whatever uh, on the, the label of their powder or pill or whatever they're taking. So at the end of the day, it's, it's ultimately just fan service. No one's actually making a real supplement company or a legitimate business at that point. It really actually produces a quality product at a good price. They're just not. You can't. So that's why when people ask, hey, why don't you do something like that? Well, I mean, I could just start a PayPal <laughs> donation page or leave my Patreon up and people could donate their $3 a month or whatever if they really like me that much. Like, well, why do that? I would just tell them, go buy, go buy these same powders for $5 a month or $3 a month from a larger company and, and do yourself a favor. Save yourself some money. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.